Ever since the end of the Second World War, there have been rumors of hidden treasure, the fabled Nazi gold. The rumors lure treasure hunters. They can find fame, adventure, and perhaps wealth. It has a romantic feel to it and an adventurous feel to it. And it takes hold of you. In 2015, there was a rumor to top them all, the Nazi gold train. It was said to have disappeared without a trace in the final months of the Second World War in Europe. Had the train now been discovered in Poland? It all began in the summer of 2015. Waldzich is a city in Lower Silesia, Poland. It was there, near the line to Wrocław, that the gold train was said to be hidden. The legend says that in this train were 300 tons of pure gold. That is, of course, very unstritten. Experts say that there could also be weapons, documents, God knows what was stored there. There are rumors that the whole Bernstein was in the train. Could an international sensation lie buried here? Could an international sensation lie buried here? Poland's top protector of monuments had no doubts. Przekonanie na poziomie ponad 99%, że istnieje taki pociąg i że ten pociąg jest zabezpieczony. Działem działa. Jest to jednoznacznie pociąg pancerny. Jak ktoś widział zdjęcie pociągu pancernego z II wojny światowej, no tak to wygląda. That statement really fired people up. Conjecture became almost definite fact. Gold train fever broke out. The buried train was said to lie underneath an embankment right beside the tracks. It was great fun for the holidays, especially for the hordes of sightseers. Tak, to jest właśnie dowód na to, że to złoto istnieje naprawdę. Tylu samolotów nad naszym domem i i rowerzystów i różnych osób z innych miast jeszcze has all the elements. Of a good thriller, yeah, a good adventure. Uh, yeah, it's got gold, hidden trains, Nazis. The gold train story was ideal for the silly season. But at the 65 kilometer marker in Waldzig, journalists from all over the world waited and watched to see if there was something more. The area was sealed off and guarded around the clock. Even the Polish Minister for Culture permitted herself to dream. Ja oczywiście też bym chciała, żeby najlepiej była tam i bursztynowa komnata i Rafael i jeszcze wszystko inne, co muszą utrzymać. The Nazis plundered museums, art collections and art dealers all over Europe. The most brazen plunderer of them all was Hitler's deputy, Hermann Göring. He said that he planned to do plenty of looting, even of items that were out of fashion. And so he did. The pick of the history of European art decorated Karenhal, his country house on the Schorfheide Heath near Berlin. Goering constantly vied with his warlord Adolf Hitler, another great art thief who stole works for a huge museum that he had in mind for his native city of Linz. In May 1945, American troops seized a whole train full of art treasures in Hitler's retreat, Berchter's garden. It was just part of Goering's booty, and only a small part of what the Nazis had plundered overall. American experts began a systematic search for the looted art. And they found it. Five million items, of which four million had been stolen or extorted from their owners. The haul was worth billions, 
and some of it has not been found to this day. One example is the legendary Amber Room from the Catherine Palace near St. Petersburg. It was priceless. The palace now has an exact replica in the original location. But where is the real Amber Room? What we definitely know about the Amber Room is that the Germans uh, captured the Amber Room in the outskirts of Leningrad in, in 1941. They brought the Amber Room um, to Königsberg, and there in 44, in late 44, autumn 44, it disappeared. So we know that in August 1944 there was, was a heavy um, air raid on, on, on Königsberg by the Royal Air Force. And there's rumor that uh, it was destroyed, it, in the Amber Room, in, in this specific attack. Others said no, um, it, 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 was, um, it was safe, it was not in the castle anymore, and it was evacuated to western parts of the Reich. Was the Amber Room destroyed? Or was it transported further west? Theories abound more than about any other Nazi treasure. It's a story without an ending. Uh, well, it, it certainly is never ending because it's been going on uh, for the past 70 years. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing is, even in the 40 years that I had an interest in this uh, area, I could say that probably I've come across, I don't know, between 15 and uh, 20 different scenarios where, where it's been found, or nearly found, shall we say. Add to them the latest scenario. The Amber Room was on a train. A train that ended up in Lower Silesia, possibly here, near the railway line at the 65 kilometer marker in Waldzig. You can even write a book about uh, the search for the Amber Room. It's, 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 it's such a whole story. And of course, it's, um, everything is possible. I mean, we have to see that, that in 1945, um, in the Reich, there was a chaos. And it's very, very difficult to exclude a specific option, a specific solution that this doesn't exist. It's very difficult. But uh, on the other hand, um, it's very interesting to see that um, since the 1940s, nothing had been found. I mean, in 1940, the Allies um, found a lot of treasures, be it gold, uh, be it art, whatever you want, name it. But after that time, nothing had been found. And even after the German reunification, when, when hundreds of new treasure hunters searched in the tunnels of the former GDR, nothing was found bigger than the rusty steel helmet. Immediately after the Allied victory in May 1945, American specialists began looking for the stolen treasures, for Nazi gold. The American forces were spending a lot of time looking for uh, gold that had been stashed there by um, um, Wehrmacht and SS troops. Some of it was found in, in mountains, some of it had been put in lakes, some of it had been hidden in, in, in farms and, and many, many places. Few people are as well informed on Nazi treasures as British author Ian Sayer. He is probably the only private individual who has laid his hands on Nazi gold in recent decades. He discovered it not in some dark hiding place, but in a safe deposit box in a bank. I got in touch with the American State Department and suggested they start investigating a bank account in Munich. Um, it did take them 13 years, but at the end of that, they did find two bars of gold that had, shall we say, disappeared, in inverted commas, um, and had disappeared since 1945. This was not the only case. For example, in 1945, a train full of treasures stolen by the SS from Hungarian Jews was seized by the US Army in Austria. This really was a gold train. It carried 52 boxes of gold and diamonds, 1,560 boxes of silver, the gold and cash reserves of a bank, and many paintings. A large part of the treasure disappeared after the Americans seized it. It took 60 years for the US government to reach a settlement. 
Not everyone who came across such treasure proved honest. The temptation was certainly great, given the value of the plunder. Today, it seems highly likely that almost all of the documented holdings of Nazi gold were recovered soon after the war. But who can be sure? Personally, I think I could say that um, there, there may be a small amount of Nazi gold to be found. Um, this would probably be um, gold that was hidden by people that uh, died before they could get to it. Otherwise, you'll appreciate that if you hide Nazi gold and, and, and you don't die under unforeseen circumstances, you'd probably want to convert it into something like um, cars, uh, houses and various other things. So um, uh, there might still be some there. But could there be hundreds of tons buried beneath this railway line? The treasure hunter Andreas Richter would be pleased. He and his partner would get a 10% finder's fee. In September 2015, they released a statement prepared by their lawyer. We as finder eines Panzerzugs aus dem Zweiten Weltkrieg, Andreas Richter and Björn Kover, erklären, dass wir den Fund, wie gesetzlich vorgeschrieben, an die Behörden des polnischen Staates gemeldet haben, wovon die Dienstnotizen angefertigt wurden. Wir verfügen über eindeutige Hinweise für seine Existenz. Richter and Copper would not say much more than that, nor would they make public whatever evidence they had of their supposed find. They said that they had found the train with a device like this, a frequency modulated continuous wave radar system. In other words, ground radar. Ich benutze es, weil ich schon seit vielen Jahren auch nachforsche im Bereich Altlasten, Drittes Reich oder auch Erster Weltkrieg. Und da haben wir es ja sehr oft mit alten Stollenanlagen zu tun, die gesucht werden. Und dafür ist es eigentlich das ideale Gerät zum Nachforschen, weil es eben halt in der Lage ist, Hohlräume anzuzeigen. Und zwar bis in eine Tiefe von 50 bis 60 Metern. The technology has several advantages. Private individuals can afford it, and the testing method is simple. Es sendet äh, per Senderantenne elektromagnetische Wellen in den Boden, fängt die dann mit der Empfängerantenne auf, gibt die Daten in einen Laptop. Dort wird per Software entweder zwei- oder dreidimensional umgerechnet, und so entstehen halt Bilder, die in Anomalien meistens Hohlräume im Boden anzeigen. Like a number of academic experts, Andreas Oberholtz was cautious about the reliability of 3D imaging. Ich selbst arbeite mit der zweidimensionalen Darstellungsweise, habe noch keine Erfahrung mit der dreidimensionalen. Ich könnte mir vorstellen, dass man bei der Interpretation dieser dreidimensionalen Bilder auch sehr hohe Sorgfalt walten lassen muss, inwiefern Details äh, insbesondere in Stollen erkennbar sind, wäre ich selber gespannt drauf. Richter und Koper were not the only ones in Wolbzich who dreamt of finding the gold train. The retired miner Tadeusz Slovakowski had spent half his life under its spell. He acquired wartime German maps, and even without geo-radar, he concluded that the train lay hidden in the very spot where Richter and Kopper said it was. According to Slovakowski, a German railway official gave him a crucial tip decades ago, and that tip convinced him that the train was there. One of the many people interested in the location of the train is Christel Focken. She advises the Wolbzig City Council and has been trying to solve the region's underground puzzles for 15 years. The radar satelliten bilder zeigen ganz genau, dass dort hinter ein möglicher Eingang ist, der vielleicht unterirdisch direkt hierüber in den Tunnel führt oder auch hier unterirdisch vielleicht noch weitere Räume als Luftschutzraum zur Verfügung stellt. Crystal works with satellite images that clearly show up any irregularities in the terrain. From the images, she concluded that the railway track once ran between the suspected location of the gold train 
and the most important building in Walze. Fürstenstein Castle, now known by its Polish name, Zamek Chance. In 1943, the castle was requisitioned for conversion into a regional headquarters for Hitler. Codenamed Riza, or Giant, it was one of 20 Führer headquarters located all over Europe. Nobody asked the question about money. Is it, does it make any sense? It was Hitler's decision. Somehow he was a, a travel emperor, like in the medieval times, if you want. Hitler did not lead um, the armed forces and politics from the capital, which is the normal way how it was done. Um, remember the cabinet rooms in London or, or other things in, in Washington and so far and so forth. But he led the, the war in the Third Reich from various headquarters. So this is the reason why so, we have so many headquarters, big headquarters, with a lot of bankers, tunnels, whatever, in all of Europe. These lift shafts descend 50 meters from the castle into the depths of the mountain. At the bottom, there is a labyrinth of corridors and rooms. On the next level down, is an extensive network of tunnels. They were to house the logistics of the Führer headquarters. But in some places, the tunnels end in rubble and debris. What lies behind it? Wir wissen, dass man wirklich bis zum fast zum letzten Tag, bevor die Rote Armee hier gekommen ist, hier noch gebaut hat. Aber es ist halt nie fertig geworden. Aber man muss auch die Mentalität bedenken. Man hat immer gedacht, man gewinnt den Krieg wieder, man kann alles zurückerobern und dann hätte man hier einfach weitergebaut. Damit aber entsprechend kein Zugang ist für illegale Personen, also in dem Moment Rote Armee, hat man das Ganze dann zugeschüttet zum Teil. What secrets does Zamek Chance still conceal? Might the closed off portion of the tunnel complex contain a rail link to the outside, or even a full railway station, as Christel Focken suspects. Es gibt Zufahrten, die sind zugeschüttet, und da hoffen wir natürlich auf die weitere Entwicklung, dass wir da auch rein können, weil das ist natürlich das Geheimnis überhaupt im Moment. Hitler's Sonderzug, his special train. At times during the war, it was his most important means of transport. And it was more than that. The Führer's train was a special design um, for um, yeah, a moving headquarter, if you want. And this is very much a, a design from the early stage of the war. Hitler used it massively in 39 in Poland and also 1940. And in this idea that the leader has to be close to the front. And it's not very far away in the capital and goes to the opera and, and, and whatever, but he, in a way, has to share the experience and has to be close to his, to his headquarters. Um, and because it's, it's a very, it's a moving, it's a modern moving war, um, he has to use um, a moving headquarter, if you want. Always ready to depart. Selbst in Berlin musste der 24 Stunden die ganze Woche, die ganze Jahr über unter Dampf stehen, damit, wenn Hitler kommt, er sofort losfahren kann. Und genau dafür war hier die Anlage gebaut. So could there have been a service center for Hitler's train here, where the gold train is said to be? One thing is certain, Hitler's train itself is definitely not here. We know that it was based in a tunnel um, at Tempelhof Airfield. And it was then moved um, out of the capital, out of Berlin, uh, to Austria. And it was blown up at Zell am See in Austria. Single cars of the train have survived in other places and, and were used by, by the Federal Republic of Germany and, and others. But the whole train ended, this is very sure, ended in Zell am See in May 1945. In late September 2015, the Polish army took over the suspected location of the gold train. Sappers moved in, 
looking for booby traps, mines or unexploded bombs. Szanowni Państwo, sprawdzenie będzie za pomocą wykrywaczy min georadarów Grand Sharków, które są przygotowane do tego, żeby sprawdzić bardzo dokładnie, tak jak powiedziałem, od 40 do 1 metra, w zależności od struktury terenu. My jesteśmy tutaj tylko od sprawdzenia powierzchniowego. Umowa została zawarta z prezydentem miasta na teren określony. Dalsze, dalsze propozycje ewentualnie będą tutaj ze strony samorządu. Piotr Kopper, one of the two hopeful gold train hunters, was disappointed. He thought that searching to the depth of a meter was nowhere near enough. All they would find would be earth. Kopper and Richter believed that their geo-radar modeling had identified a train like this. A German armored train of the kind used to patrol railway lines during the war. Some of these trains are still missing to this day. Would one now be found in Wolbsit? Of course it's possible that somebody brought the train um, um, shortly before Breslau was totally surrounded by the Red Army, encircled by the Red Army, out of Breslau to protect um, the railway tracks and whatever. So this is possible. We don't know it. Um, it's not, not for sure, but it's still an option. Mobile gun turrets. These armored trains were built in Breslau. Some of these trains survived and, and they, had, they had guns, they had anti-aircraft guns, anti-tank guns. And obviously we know for sure that one of these trains ended up in Breslau and was because of his guns was used against the Red Army. At the end of January 1945, the Red Army was preparing its assault on Silesia. It was closing the ring around the Silesian capital, Breslau, known today as Wrocław. A railway line ran from the capital to Waldzich then known by its German name of Waldenburg. On that line, not far from Waldenburg, 15-year-old Gotthard Veltz saw something one night in January. He's never forgotten it. It was neblig. Irgendwie haben sie getankt, Wasser gefüllt oder weiß der Kuckuck was. Der Panzer abgedeckt mit Planen. Die Soldaten, die hatten ihre Helme auf. Maschinengewehre, da flitzten die hin und her, bis er weitergefahren ist und war alles zugedeckt. Wenn so ein Zug bewaffnet ist, da muss doch irgendwas drunter sein, was wirklich kostbar ist. What did Gotthard Welt see that night? Was it a train transporting tanks? Or was it an armored train? Like the one said to lie hidden in Walbsich. The problem with eyewitnesses is not that they deliberately are lying and, and tell you any, any forged stories, but um, you know, we know how the human memory works. And the human memory always you know, fits pieces and bits together from the past and from very recent times. I saw a train and I'm still really believing it. So therefore, uh, it's, the memory of an eyewitness is only pushes us in a direction. And we have to verify and have to double check it if this can really be the case. In January 1945, the fate of Breslau hung in the balance. The Nazis declared the city a fortress, despite its obvious lack of defenses. Gauleiter Karl Hunker demanded all out resistance to the end. Overturned trams were supposed to hold back the tanks of the Red Army, the most powerful land force in the world. By mid-February, the Red Army had cut Breslau off completely. In Geschützen, so hörte man dann schon immer näher, und es ging nichts mehr rein und nichts mehr raus. Und die Soldaten, die drin waren in Breslau, die sagten uns dann auch, jetzt ist zu, jetzt kommt keiner mehr raus, jetzt müsst ihr hier bleiben. 
In the name of self-defense, Breslau committed suicide. Buildings were blown up so that Red Army soldiers couldn't occupy them. Gauleiter Hanka had a corridor blasted through the center of the city to build an airstrip. Und dann mussten wir die in Arbeitsalter waren, wie Frauen und Kinder, Jugendliche, mussten die Steine kaputt kloppen, auf Loren laden und dann wurden die zu einer Rollbahn gewalzt. While they were strafed by low flying planes. Da musste man sich schnell nur ducken, wo Möglichkeit war. Und ich hatte im Glück, ich bin nicht getroffen worden, aber viele sind getroffen worden. Pointless deaths. The airstrip was only ever used once by Hunker himself. On the 6th of May 1945, he disappeared from Breslau. It's a sad part of the story, to put it that way, that this agitator who uh, always delivered his hate speeches uh, and never give up speeches and presented him himself as a core of the defense, that these Gauleiter tried to escape and obviously made it out of Breslau. This is what we know for sure, that, that he made it out of Breslau and then he disappeared. Did Hunker make plans for after Germany's defeat? Did he have valuables taken out of Breslau before it was cut off? Works of art? Gold? He had the authority. This is another angle that has treasure hunters speculating. After the war, Polish intelligence interrogated a former Breslau policeman who had remained in Poland instead of fleeing to Germany, as most other Germans did. Herbert Kloser testified, after at first denying it, that at the end of the war, the SS and the police had amassed a hoard of gold in the Breslau police headquarters. The gold came mainly from the city's banks and it was stored in dozens of large boxes. He only found out later what the boxes had held. The so-called Breslau gold treasure has never been found. Could this be another piece in the gold train puzzle? Or is it only a persistent rumor? Rumors start sort of, uh, did you see that train? What train? Oh, that armored train. Oh, so, uh, and, and it, it, it grows like topsy. It sort of gets bigger and bigger and, and, and bigger and larger and more valuable. And, and of course, then there's the sort of, well, there's still, there, there, are, um, there are tunnels in there and, and there's, you can't get to them anymore. They blew, them, blew the entrances up. So, well, do you think that, that any of those trains are still, well, they could be. You know, and do you think those trains could have treasure? Well, why else would they blow them up? You know, and, and suddenly you've got this sort of question and answer thing going on with people saying, well, that's right, that could have happened, this could have happened. Suddenly, all of that is not conjecture anymore, it's fact. Waldzich, November 2015. Once the Polish army had declared the area safe, geophysicists from the Krakow University of Technology examined it closely. Look over there, said Tadeusz Slovakowski, the first treasure hunter. The points for the train were in that depression, about 100 meters along. This is what supposedly happened. The train turned off from the main line and entered the tunnel. The tunnel entrance was then blown up to seal it. But did it happen? Light would soon be shed. W ostatnich dniach prowadziliśmy badania trzema metodami geofizycznymi. Metodą magnetyczną, metodą grawimetryczną oraz metodą georadarową. Dobór tych metod bezpośrednio wynikał 
ze skontrastowania parametrów fizycznych. Jeśli sobie wyobrazimy, że mamy do czynienia z y, pociągiem tym słynnym, złotym lub pancernym, jak niektórzy nazywają, to mamy do czynienia z nagromadzeniem dużej masy magnetycznej. Czyli użycie metody magnetycznej jest ze wszech miar pożądane. An object as large as a train, undiscovered for over 70 years, would be a real sensation. But why did no one mention this operation back in 1945? You've got a train driver, you've got uh, Wehrmacht officers, you've got people looking after the treasure. So everybody comes out, okay, before they dynamite it. And nobody says anything. At the end of the day, seven decades later, all the others have said nothing, and one person has, has said, well, look, I just want to tell you where it is now before I die. Uh, is it feasible? I, my answer to that would be not at all. Besides, there were more logical places to hide a train. A few kilometres south of Walbsuch is the Oxhead Tunnel. Located well outside the city, it was intended to be a shelter for Hitler's special train. Behind that, at the former Charlottenbronn military railway station, there is a 200 square kilometer area full of underground puzzles. Here in the Owl Mountains, the Nazis built gigantic tunnel systems as part of the Riese Führer headquarters project. Riese is, first of all, a headquarter, um, um, headquarters for Hitler. So a lot of tunnels, bunkers, um, facilities for Hitler himself, but also for his staff, um, and his political staff, and for the whole armed forces. So it's, it's, a, huge, it's a huge complex. But there's a plus. So on top of this, as an add-on, was the idea of the relocation of the German industry um, below ground level. So because of the Allied air attacks became worse and worse and worse, there was a decision that um, key industries um, should be relocated into tunnels. For in the last years of the war, the Luftwaffe was less and less capable of countering the Allied bomber offensive. During the day, the Americans systematically destroyed German industry. While at night, the British laid waste to Germany's major cities. Virtually all of them went up in flames in the last years of the war. In mid-1943, a huge construction project got underway. Hundreds of German armaments companies were moved into bomb-proof underground galleries, like these in Schwarz in Tyrol. Today, these places are monuments to homicidal megalomania. Then, they were top priority sites for building jet fighters and long-range missiles. Advanced new weapons that were supposed to turn the tide of the war back in Germany's favor. The production and development of the rockets were part of the ever-growing empire of Heinrich Himmler's SS. Most of the rocket assembly was done by slave laborers from concentration camps, such as these in the Mittelbau Dora underground factory in Thuringia. A bomb-proof bunker complex was also built for Himmler himself and the other SS leaders near Hallein in Austria. Himmler would never use it. The power of Heinrich Himmler and the SS rested primarily on the unlimited supply of slave labor from the concentration camps. The laborers who built the tunnel complexes were worked to death. They were replaced by new laborers from the camps. It was called annihilation through labor.
In the Owl Mountains of Lower Silesia, the tunnel systems were never finished. Sometimes it's not clear what the tunnels were even for. The Germans dig tunnels like vaults there, so there are so many installations. Um, and the problem is they, we don't have a final report from the Germans. So it would have been really brilliant to have a report from May 1945, one day before the Air Red Army entered the complex. We have this number of tunnels uh, and, and the, they should be used for this and that, and we have that kind of installation in it. We don't have that kind. The only thing we have, for sure, is a report by Albert Speer. As early as 1944, Albert Speer reported using 257,000 cubic meters of concrete and carving out 213,000 cubic meters of tunnels, figures that far exceed what is known about today. It's always, you know, a policy. You make a policy within the system with your reports to present yourself in the, in the best possible light. Or the second option is that a lot of tunnels were destroyed by the Germans or by the Russians, we don't know, or even by the Poles. So we just don't know that. And very little is, 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 is open to the public. We know of half a dozen tunnel systems south of Walbzig. But are there more? No one is willing to rule it out. It's quite possible, even probable, that the Owl Mountains still have a few more surprises in store. Tunnel entrances that have been filled in or blasted shut are being discovered all the time. Crystal Fokken alone reported four suspected tunnel sites late in 2015. Anlage Hausdorf, das ist Stollen 7. Der ist durch den Erdbruch freigestürzt und äh, wir haben jetzt die Möglichkeit, den aufzugraben. Dass wir ran können, dann sind wir die Ersten, die seit 70 Jahren drin sind. Dann schauen wir uns das gleich mal an. Mhm. Schöne Sache. She has recruited two cavers from Munich, Andreas Villa and Norbert Hans. Frequency mode. They are well equipped and very experienced. Also wir, ähm Wir machen diese Expedition jetzt seit ungefähr zehn Jahren und waren da in ungefähr 100, 150 solcher unterirdischen Anlagen. Äh, unser Anliegen ist es, wir dokumentieren das, was ist da passiert, wir rekonstruieren es, probieren die Geschichte einfach nachzuzeichnen, was ist hier produziert worden, äh, welches menschliche Leid hat hier stattgefunden mit den Konzentrationslagern und ähm, es ist für uns einfach eine Mischung aus Wracktauchen und Indiana Jones mit Historie. Down they go, into a Nazi underworld that has been sealed off for 70 years. The purpose of the complex is still unknown. Andreas cautiously checks the site. But there seems to be no way in. And then his gas monitor beeps. Methane is produced in tunnels like this when the timber supports rot. Können wir vergessen. Der geht noch 5 Meter rein, dann ist er komplett verbrochen. Okay. Und die 5 Meter stehen so unter Wasser. Eine Betonverbauung, ein Bogen steht drin. Also das können wir vergessen hier. Das ist zu gefährlich. Die ganze Sache muss man mit ganz großer Vorsicht genießen. Es gibt einige Gefahren, die da unten auf einen warten können. Das sind Verbrüche, es kann jederzeit einbrechen. Es können sich an den tiefsten Stellen der Anlagen können sich co 2 sehen bilden, die man nicht schmeckt und auch nicht riecht, wo der Sauerstoff dann akut weg ist. Und aus dem Grund, wenn man sich da nicht richtig auskennt und sich damit befasst hat, und dann würde ich empfehlen, davon abzulassen. 
A foolhardy treasure hunter plunged to his death in the region as recently as September 2015. The sealed off tunnels of the Riza project still hold many secrets. The most mysterious part is the Osufka complex. From the surface, a shaft descends 50 meters into the depths. centralny punkt tego obiektu. Znajdujemy się w okolicach szybu wentylacyjno-transportowego i ten szyb łączył część powierzchni podziemną. Wyjście, wylot tego szybu jest w środku lasu. Od tego szybu biegnie betonowy podziemny tunel w kierunku rampy kolejowej, gdzie w 1944 roku dojeżdżały pociągi. A secret document from the last days of the war states that weapons and ammunition were to be stored here for a strong point. It is therefore quite possible that this was where the reported Walbzich train was heading, and that the train transported only weapons, not gold. The director of the Osufka complex estimates that only half of it has been explored. What is hidden in the inaccessible areas? Many of the tunnel roofs are as high as the ceiling of a cathedral. There is enough space to accommodate large equipment or even whole trains. It's by weitem nicht fertig. Es gibt Teilbereiche, die die mit Beton ausgegossen sind, wahrscheinlich Verbruchszonen. Aber bei weitem es wirkt so, es ist eine Baustelle, die verlassen worden ist. Also hier ist Wenn man sich das Gesamte anschaut, auf jeden Fall großes geplant gewesen. Plans for what? Mr. Lazanowski, the director of the museum, has a remarkable hypothesis. Podziemne miasto, bo jesteśmy w podziemnym mieście Osówka w Głuszycy, miało być schronem dla naukowców z zakresu chemii i fizyki, którzy prowadziliby tutaj pracę nad tym, ażeby znaleźć sposób na odpalenie bomby atomowej. After Germany's surrender, the Soviets evidently searched here for just that. Installations associated with German atomic research. Decades later, the physicist Georgi Flierov, one of the fathers of the Soviet atomic bomb, mentioned help from German scientists during a private conversation. But what did the Soviets find at Osuvka? That is still uncertain. These foundations on the surface of the complex are particularly remarkable. So far, no one has been able to explain them. I na przykład pod koniec lat 50. Rosjanie, żołnierze Armii Czerwonej, którzy tutaj byli na tych terenach, mówili o tym, że mógł, to, tu, mógł tu funkcjonować prototyp elektrowni atomowej. So the cargo on the Walbzich train, if the train ever existed, could have been high technology, rather than gold or weapons. The Soviets clearly expected to find materials for German atomic research. However, Russian files that could throw light on this are not yet available. We don't know for sure what kind of installations, what kind of research uh, was done in at least parts of the tunnels of the Riza complex. Um, but it's very likely that the Russians, um, very soon after the first soldiers arrived there, had a scientific and academic committee and try to get to get everything and, and, and bring it back to the Soviet Union. But th this part of the story uh, can only be told if you have Russian documents. But we don't have access to these sources yet. So it's still um, history to be told in the future. Walbzich, the 15th of December, 2015. The mayor has called a press conference on the gold train. 
The city has probably never seen so many camera teams. Today is to be the moment of truth. For the first time, Piotr Kopper and Andreas Richter will publicly present the results of their geo-radar tests. Professor Made from the Krakow University of Technology will then discuss the findings of his working group. Richter and Kopper display a 3D computer model that they have superimposed on an aerial photo of the site. They remain convinced that it probably shows a hidden armoured train. It shows regular rectangular structures. But then it's Professor Made's turn. With scientific thoroughness, he presents the test methods that he and his working group used and the results they reached. He devotes a great deal of time to the magnetometer tests that he and his colleagues conducted. He makes it exciting. Finally, he leaves the conclusion to a journalist in the room. Richter and Kopper's expressions speak for themselves. Is this the end of the Walbzik gold train? The crucial point is, the scientists could not detect enough metal in the hill for a train to be inside it. And that's it. There is a handshake for Piotr Kopper, as if after a tennis match. But who is right? Kopper and Richter are not about to give up. When we the Genehmigung kriegen, then we anfangen to graben or a tunnel rein to bring. We are bereit, das to bezahlen, das to finanzieren. We have the Geld, um das selbst to finanzieren. That is not the problem. It's fehlt nur die Genehmigung. Is it really worth spending so much money searching for a train that may not even exist? At least, not here. They are of good conscience, I'm sure. Now, there may be something there, OK? It's possible that there's something there, but I think that they will be very disappointed with what they find. Things like German army helmets or, or gloves or, or supplies or, or things that have... Uh, rusty, I mean, you see, or, or maybe a knife or a gun or something like that. Those are the sort of things that they might come across. But even if that proves to be the case, there are still many undiscovered sealed tunnels in the region where the train could be. Finally, I'd just like to say there will always be stolen Nazi treasure awaiting discovery at the end of the rainbow. The story of the Silesian gold train is not over yet.